Wrath and Glory is a tabletop RPG system for Warhammer 40,000. I found it through a Humble Bundle sale, and recently I read through it, ran a test game, and enjoyed it quite a lot, and I intend to run more games. But I know that building a character can often be intimidating for new players, so in this video I'm going to explain the quickest and easiest way to build a character for Wrath and Glory using its archetype build method. With this video, you'll be up and running in a game within 12 minutes. Step 1. Know the framework. Before you start, talk to the Game Master to find out what framework and tier the game is using. The framework determines which of the many Warhammer factions you can choose from, and sets a moral compass for the game, which is no small feat within the Warhammer universe. For instance, a game that uses a framework with the Imperium as the protagonist probably means that orcs are off-limit to you, uh, while a game that has orcs as protagonists means the Imperium's probably off-limits. A framework that uses rogue traitors, though, as the protagonists probably means nothing is off-limits. They're kind of a wild card. The game's tier informs you how much XP you start with. You get the tier number times 100 in experience points for your character build, and you'll use that XP to buy character attributes in the next steps. There are four tiers. Tier 1, 100 XP. Tier 2, 200 XP, tier 3, 300 XP, tier 4, 400 XP. Write the tier on your character sheet. Step 2. Choose an archetype. An archetype defines what your character does for a living and what faction within the vast setting of Warhammer 40,000 they belong to. Archetypes are listed starting on page 22 of the core rulebook, but even more are available on page 100 of the Forsaken System Player's Guide, so if you have access to that, don't look that over. Archetypes are specific to tiers, so select only from archetypes within the tier of your game. Each archetype entry on page 22 of the core rulebook has a page number by it, so turn to that page for the description and stat block of the archetype you're considering. Write down your species, archetype, faction, and keywords at the top of your character sheet. When you see a keyword enclosed in square brackets, replace it with something specific to whatever you want your character's background to be. For instance, all Adepta Sororitas archetypes have a Order keyword, which you can replace with a Holy Order, like Order of the Martyred Lady, or Order of the Bleeding Heart, and so on. Adeptus Mechanicus archetypes have a Forge World keyword that needs replacing. Orcs have clan keywords. You can pick something you already know from the official lore, or you can make one up. Not all archetypes have a replaceable keyword, but you might see it depending on what you've chosen. Write down your archetype abilities in the Talents and Abilities field of the back page of your character sheet. Write down your war gear in the war gear table at the bottom of the first page of the character sheet. Do not record your attribute ratings or skills yet, but do deduct the cost of your archetype, the number up at the top of the stat block, from your total XP. You've just spent that much XP on this archetype. Step 2. Research your species. When you choose an archetype, it includes your species. The core rulebook says bonus attributes, skills, or abilities are also included in your archetype package, but none of the species' abilities are actually listed in any archetype stat block, so you have to look them up yourself. It's okay, it's not a big deal. The stat bonuses for your species are in the Species table on page 29 of the core rulebook, or in the Species section of the Forsaken System Player's Guide if you're using that. Write down your speed in the speed field in the right column of your character sheet. Write down your species abilities in the talents and abilities field on the second page of your character sheet. These are all included in the price of your archetype, so don't deduct anything from your XP. You've already done that. Step 3. Record your attributes. Most archetypes have suggested attribute rankings listed in the archetype stat block, but they do cost extra. You haven't paid for them yet. If yours provides a suggested list, write the attribute rank on your character sheet in the Attributes section and deduct the cost from your total XP. To boost the attributes, write down the base attribute rankings as provided in the stat block. Then turn to page 24 and refer to the Attribute Costs table to see the cost for boosts to an attribute ranking. Regardless of what archetype you're playing, don't worry about having an awkward amount of XP left over. You can boost a skill or a talent in the next steps. Step 4. Skills. Your character has skills, but like everything else, 
they cost XP. Skills are described on page 121 of the core rulebook. Normally you'd buy skills using the costing chart on page 25, but to make it quick and easy, just buy the suggested skills listed in the stat block. If you have some leftover XP, you can probably use it up here by buying small boosts to a skill or two. Once you've got your skills chosen, write them in the skills section of your character sheet and deduct the cost whether you did it from the suggested skill list in your stat block, or you had to do it piecemeal from your total XP. Step five, choose your talents. Talents are abilities unique to your character. Most archetypes have a list of suggested talents to help you decide what might be thematic for your character. Unlike suggested skills and attributes though, there's no listing for XP cost because ultimately you have to decide on just one or two talents and you have to budget for them. By now, you've spent most of your XP, so you can spend whatever you have left over on talents. This is it. There's nothing left to buy. Talent descriptions start on page 128, and each one lists its XP cost along with any special requirements. There are a lot of talents to look through, and you should browse them to find some tricks you want your character to know. Look at the talents suggested, go to the page number of the talent, read about it, and choose the one or two you like and can afford with your remaining XP. Once you've got your talents chosen, write them in the talents and abilities section on the back of your character sheet. Step 6. Wrath. All characters start with two wrath points. Write that in the wrath field in the right column of your character sheet. Step 7. Everything else. Most fields of the character sheet are notated with gray text to show how to calculate other important values that you haven't filled in yet. For instance, conviction is equal to your willpower, while defense is equal to your initiative minus one. You can fill these calculated fields in now, or you can just wait until they come up during the game. Step eight, play the game. You're ready to go. Grab a handful of six-sided dice, a miniature if you're playing with battle mats, and play. Here's what you need to know. Playing an RPG is mostly just talking with friends about what you would do in some pretend situation. What would you do if a spaceship full of aliens boarded your smuggler ship? Would you hide or would you grab a LAS pistol and fight? Or some mix between the two? Or would you use diplomacy? At some point during the game, the game master will ask you for a test and give you a difficulty number. To make a dice test, add the number of the most applicable attribute strength, toughness, agility, initiative, willpower, intellect, or fellowship, and a relevant skill, and then roll that many six-sided dice. One of your die needs to be different from the rest. That one's your wrath die. Any die that lands on a four or five is a success, or an icon. A die that lands on six counts as two icons, also called an exalted icon. If you've got icons equal to or greater than the difficulty number, then you've succeeded in whatever you were trying to do. If your wrath die rolls a one, bad things happen. But if your wrath die rolls a six, then something extra good happens. That's all the rules you need to know for about 80% of the game. There are some special rules for combats and some cool things you can do with wrath and glory points, but you'll learn about that as you go. Playing the game is the best way to learn it, so find a gaming group and start a game before your Commissar decides you're more trouble than you're worth. The Emperor protects. Or the Emperor is dead, depending on which side of that debate you fall on.